Hi, everyone. Hello, I'm Orna Walters. I'm Matthew Walters. Welcome to Myth Busting Mondays. That's right. Every Monday where we bust the myths about accidental love so that you can create love on purpose. Yes, create that soul-satisfying, long-lasting love that you desire. So we're here to help in that mission. Well, our mission is to bust the myth about the accidental part that everybody thinks they're just going to slip on a banana peel and land on that magical person they never have problems with. Exactly. <laughs> like, you know, like it works out in the movies, right? You just, you meet cute and then you live happily ever after. Well, you have to overcome something first, but then you live happily ever after. Well, yes, there's always that second act, yes. you know, disillusioned, <laughs> end of the world, oh everything's gosh. gone south. Oh my gosh, it's all over. But yeah. you, and it all works out in the end. Yes, but, you know, movies are about 90 minutes. Uh, to two hours and uh, life is a lot longer than that. So yes. we're going to tackle what this myth about this meant to be. And usually it happens when something doesn't go as planned or as expected. And we hear this all the time. Oh, I guess it just wasn't meant to be as if there's some larger entity micromanaging their life or specifically their love life, mm -hmm. right? Not meant to be. So is love meant to be? Is love meant to be? Is hmm. love meant? Because hmm. if love was meant to be, right, then it's fate in a sense. That's what we're talking about here, right? We're talking about forces outside of ourselves that have already decided what we deserve and what we don't deserve and what we get in this life and what we don't get in this life and all of that. And really, that means we have no power, no control over anything. So we might as well just stay at home and watch Netflix. Well, uh oh, a lot of people are doing that right now. <laughs> Um, okay, so here's the deal. If you believe that love is meant to be for you, then guess what? You're on the path to creating that love that you want. And if you believe something else, that it's not meant for you perhaps, or that you're meant to be alone, mm. or that it's meant to be with a particular person, but that person doesn't want you, and so that's not really a matchy match, right? So if it's anything besides your belief system, if your belief system says something other than it's meant to be for you, you're going to have a hard time creating that love that you want. Because we imagine that only humans are listening to us at the moment. I mean, maybe your pets are hanging out listening in the background, but if you're a human being, you are worthy and deserving of love, meaning love is in fact meant to be for you. Ah, I like what you did there. You did a little twist on it on me. I wasn't even expecting that. So I got secrets, baby. Yeah, she's good. Watch this <laughs> ninja stuff. Um, so yeah, so love in a sense is meant to be in a sense, because we believe that all of us come into the world as the human embodiment of the energy of love, the physical embodiment of the energy of love, right? you ever spend any time around a newborn baby, they give love freely, they receive love freely. It doesn't really matter, right? They're, they're open. They don't have any beliefs about love being hard or love, you know, love not working out for them or them not deserving love. They don't have those beliefs. They learn that stuff in this life. But their true nature, in a sense, our true nature, is we are the physical embodiment of the energy of love. And we are here to share that love with others. And one of the best ways to share that love with others is, is in an intimate, long-term relationship. Yeah, to do that in partnership, exactly. in a romantic partnership. And so is love meant to be? It really, it's up to you, right? We want to say you have free will around this love thing. So examine your belief systems to find those blocks that are keeping you from the love that you want. Because ultimately what you believe is true is true for you. Like maybe you have a limiting belief that love is for other people, but it's not for you because you've been brokenhearted. I know I'm guilty as charged, which is why I use that example, <laughs> right? I, for a long time, I thought love was for other people and not for me. And so we want to say, examine those belief systems, because if you want to have a lasting loving partnership, then you can create it. If you just simply have that desire, right? Sometimes um, we hear these other sort of sayings in the world that drive us a little cuckoo, drive Matthew and I a little cuckoo. Like yeah. there's 
um, there's this weird thing that people say. They say, be careful what you wish for. And I'm always like, what? What? Like, there's a lot of things in life to be careful of, right? A lot of things. But what you want, what I want, well, that's not one of them, well, right? I think what people are talking about with that, and it goes around with this idea of the meant to be thing as well. Yeah, that's why I brought it up. Yeah, which is, <laughs> which is that, you know, we, we get, we feel hopeful. When we wish for something, we start hoping that it'll happen and we start dreaming about it happening and maybe we even visualize it happening, right? And then if there's a stumbling block on the way and it doesn't work out the way we expect it to, we end up feeling disappointed, right? Yeah. It's like, it's like that hope. Don't, not to get your hopes up too high. Don't get your hopes up thing. too high, right? Yeah. Because then you'll be more disappointed. And so I just want to say this, like if there's something that you really want, whether it's lasting love with an ideal partner or something else, and there's something that you really want, then we say, go all in, go in a hundred percent towards the goal of what you want, but don't be too attached to the details about it. So I, I'm a baseball gal. Like I just, I love baseball. You know, the beginning of that movie, um, Bull Durham. There's that monologue that Susan Strandon delivers and it starts saying, I believe in the church of baseball. And I, I do, I believe in the church of baseball. And so, you know, when that big time slugger steps up to the plate, he doesn't envision that every time he's going to hit a home run, but he wants to get to that plate and perform at his best efforts. He's not attached to the outcome, but he's going to make best efforts. And that's what we want to say to you, because if you're thinking that there's something else micromanaging your love life about whether it's meant to be or not meant right. to be for you, then you're abdicating that free will that you were given. So if you're not attached to the outcome of the details, but attached to the outcome of the goal, that's really how you can make magic and really create this kind of lasting partnership that we're yeah, talking about. Exactly, and I, I think it's great you use the analogy of baseball because in baseball, they think a 30% success rate is like really great. I mean, that's somebody who's doing, who's at the that's top of their slugger. game. Yeah, right? absolutely. That's 30% success rate, right? And you know, oftentimes when we're dating and we're maybe we're just getting back out there, we're getting online and we, we stumble and we run across people who really, you know, probably shouldn't be online dating or certainly not a match for you. Not a match just for let's us. Be kind. <laughs> right, not a match for you. Let's just leave it at that. And you get discouraged and, and then you start saying, well, you know, the online dating doesn't work. Right. And it's like, oh, well, you just gave up after a, you know, a couple of bad experiences. But that's the thing about life, right? Sometimes we have to work hard to get the things we really want. And for some reason we think with love that it shouldn't be that way right? Because love is this thing that's different from everything else. It's different from your career. It's different from your, your physical health or it's your physical just, endurance, right? right but it shouldn't, it shouldn't be hard. It should just happen. Magically occur. Magically occur, right? And so this thing about it be, not being meant to be when it doesn't work out, right? Oh, I guess it wasn't meant to be. Well, first off, I think, you know, people are referencing that to a specific person, Right. I guess it wasn't meant to be with that person, and it probably wasn't. Maybe they weren't your person, right? But also, I think using that phrase as a way of stopping your search, right? Because we hear a lot. We have people write us and say, well, you know, this happened, and I guess, you know, in this life, love it wasn't meant to be for me, right? And I that think makes me so sad. it does. And I think it's, I think really it's, it's an excuse to not deal with your disappointment. And, and the heartache. And I mean, the heartache. And, and that's the thing. You've yeah. got to deal with the pain. You've got to get through the other side of the pain because on the other side, there's love waiting for you. I mean, look, when, you know, I get it, the gyms are closed, but, you know, we go to the gym for resistance. We literally, we go to this place to provide us with the machinery to give us resistance and build up our muscles. And so why don't we apply that analogy to the dating process? Because sometimes you go through the dating process and things don't work out the way you would hope, but you're building up, I don't want to say resistance, right? But you're building up a persistence. You're saying this is important to me because you're focusing on it and you're making adjustments, right? I mean, if every single time you went to the gym, you injured something, right? You would probably consult with a coach right. and go, hey, I thought I knew how to use these machines. I, I thought guess I'm I knew how to do this. Wrong. I'm doing something wrong here because I keep straining this <laughs> or hurting that. And, you know, 
more than just a regular, you know, that good, that good sort of sore feeling. You, right. know, you can tell right. I like the gym a little bit, right? I, I love to work out. I've always been athletic. So here's the thing is when things don't go your way, it's, to, it's perfectly okay to feel badly. And it's like, I think somehow we resist this idea that we're somehow we're going to feel badly because it's part of our human experience. So if you accept your humanness and you're like, okay, here I am on planet earth in this human body. I'm here to experience the full range of human emotion, right? And then that way you stop trying to cherry pick the feel good feelings and try to diminish those not so feel good feelings. Those not so feel good feelings are there also supporting you and helping you. Just like if you injured your ankle Mm -hmm. and you stood up and you put your full weight on it, there'd be a signal from that injured ankle up to your brain that sends the signal of pain and you would be like, ow, that hurts, right? (laughs) Ow, why, ow? (laughs) So when you experience disappointment in the dating process or your heart's broken through a relationship ending, why don't you just go, oh, these feelings are appropriate, right? Just like the feeling of pain that comes from an injured ankle. If your heart is broken, we get it. Both of us had Mm -hmm. our hearts broken quite a bit before we, you know, got together and chose to love each other on purpose, right? And work our way through whatever differences arise. And so what you can do is go, oh, this is a time for me to go in and sort of heal, right? And, And feel those bad feelings. I mean, my girlfriends used to laugh at me, especially my roommates, you know, I'd go through a breakup and I'd like lock myself in my bedroom for, you know, like a weekend and I'd play like every sad song and I, you know, I'd barely eat and I'd come out, you know, I'd like cry all weekend long. And when one song stopped making me cry, I'd switch to another song that would inspire the tears. And oh my gosh, by Monday morning, you know, I'd come out for you know breakfast or whatever and head off before heading off to class and they're like, how are you? And I'm like, he's dead. I'm okay now. <laughs> I'm like, I'm kind of laughing because he's dead to me. Not yeah, just dead. Right? He's dead to me. Right. <laughs> he's dead to me now. I'm okay. And, and I think, I mean, I know that might sound really, really, really harsh, but like that dead to me thing meant I don't have to carry it around anymore. Like I wanted to go through the pain in a big old like weekend thing, cry it all out instead of like, leaving the door open or, you know, whatever, whatever. Like I was like, Oh, it did. He doesn't want me. Okay. I'm moving on. Like I was talking to a girlfriend the other day about a guy that I dated. Um, Matthew, you know him cause we're still friends, but we met <laughs> through doing a, a show together. We were in a play together and we were going out for several months and then he broke up with me. We're still in the play. Um, cause there was a whole rehearsal and now the play's performing. Right. And so two weeks later he wanted to get back together and I looked at him, I said, well, what's different? And he said, oh, I miss you. And I'm like, well, that doesn't tell me anything. (laughs) Like, what's different? Like, how am I going to know that you're not going to just decide you want to break up with me again? And I'm kind of laughing because we remained friends and we have been friends now for many, many decades. And I mean, he's a lovely person, but he certainly wasn't my person. But all of his friends in the play were so mean to me when I wouldn't take him back. And I said, well, why are you mad at me? You know, and they're oh, you're you know, you're not being nice to him. He wants to get back together. And I'm like, yeah, but I didn't want to break up. Like he chose to break up and there are consequences to our actions. And so I'm not saying like I can never, I mean, Matthew, I think in a test, like I don't think I have to defend myself and say I'm a forgiving person, but just this, you know, to me it was like, that was a, like, there was, it's not like we had a fight and he broke up with me, you know, out of anger. And I could be like, oh, okay, you were triggered, whatever. I mean, like literally he's like, oh, we need to talk and gave me and broke up with me. And it was like out of the blue and I, I was blindsided and I just thought, well, how can I, I can't trust that he wouldn't do that to me again. And so I didn't want to take him back. And so this whole idea of like, he's dead to me after crying for a weekend was my way of taking care of myself so that I could move on because I wanted to have all of those bad feelings and cry it out and sort of end it for myself and have closure for myself. Because if somebody's dead to me, then they can't come back and hurt me again. But I can continue on my journey to find somebody that's going to want to work out through the difficulties that come up. So you probably discovered a little bit about me. <laughs> just I a, a little bit. I, if you do any astrology, <laughs> just know that I have a Scorpio moon. I'm, I'm good with it. So <laughs> You don't want to be on our bad side. <laughs> yeah. I just want to say, like, 
you know, and, and then, you know, it's one of these things. Everybody handles it differently. You don't have to handle heartache the way I did in that specific way. But what we're saying is if you're, if you're pushing it off to say, oh, I don't want to risk again. Because I think a lot of times when people get, you know, and there are like a lot of people feeling really isolated and lonely right now. And so we're sort of addressing this today to say, look, there's lots of creative ways to create connection with people that you know, and also with people that you don't know. It's a great time to date right now in 2020. There's a lot of people online looking for a connection, not a hookup, because they want something real. They want to be sharing their life with somebody through this really stressful, unique time. So you can find that um, if you're open. And if you're not willing to risk, because on some level you think, oh, it's not meant to be for you because it didn't work out with this one specific person. I mean, I'll confess, part of my baseball obsession came from the fact that I dated a professional baseball player, right? So I dated a professional baseball player and for a long time I thought, oh, he was the guy. And I think out of all of my heartbreaks, that might have been like the one of the most excruciatingly painful heartbreaking experience when I realized it wasn't you know he wasn't choosing me and quite frankly then eventually I decided you're not it you know like I literally sent him the forget my name and forget my phone number and you know I don't exist to you I'm dead you know, to, I'm dead to you exactly now, you, know? you know it's interesting you keep bringing up sports right and <laughs> I, I want to because I, I read an article recently about an about a athlete who was injured and missed part of last season as a football player, and he was talking about coming back this season. And one of the things he said was, he said, you know, I really wanted to be out there playing with all, you know, my teammates, but I couldn't. So I had to change my way of thinking, right, in order to get through what I was going through. And now he's ready to get back out there again with his teammates. And in a sense, it's a great analogy for heartbreak, right? Mm -hmm. It's like you have to, when, when heartbreak happens, you got to change your thinking a little bit. And part of that thinking is you got to spend time to heal yourself, to heal your heart. We always say when your heart breaks, it breaks open to receive more love. Yeah, right? it, your heart it breaks, breaks open to receive more love. Yes. And, but you have to be available to that. You have to be, allow yourself to feel that vulnerability, allow yourself to have that compassion for yourself so that you can grow and become more resilient to those heartbreaks, to those relationships that don't work out, the ones that quote unquote weren't meant to be, right? <laughs> so that you can find that one that was meant to be. Because that's the answer to this week's myth, right? Is love meant to be? Yes. yes love but, is meant to be. But you have to believe it. We believe it's meant to be for you. So it's important. May not meant to be with the person you know, you're thinking that you're attached to, right? <laughs> so we're going to say again, love is meant to be for you, but you've got to believe it. You have to believe in your heart. Like I knew even through all the heartbreaks I had been through that it was really important to me to have a really great love relationship. I just, I really, really wanted that. And so I was going to do whatever it took for me to change all of my junk, right? All my baggage, <laughs> let go of my stuff that was blocking me and keeping me from having a great love relationship. And so we know if it's possible for these two people to figure it out, yeah. it's definitely possible for you too. We kind of joke that between the two of us, we made pretty much every mistake you can make in relationships. So if we can figure it out, you can too. So um, join us tomorrow for Ask O and M Live. I'm O. And I'm M. Um, we're going to be same time, 5 p.m. Pacific time. I know last Monday, Matthew said, put, you know, your questions here. So there's two places where you can put them. We set up a, a post yesterday in this group. If you look there, it says, ask us your questions for Ask O&M Live on Tuesday. So if you have a question you want to ask in advance, go ahead and post it there. And then you can also have the opportunity to join us live and post your question in that live video feed in the comment section there. So I'm, because I'm the one looking for those questions, I didn't want to be searching all over the group live with you guys. So um, there'll be two places I'll be looking for those questions. Number one is on that comment thread where we ask for questions ahead of time, that post went up yesterday. And then there's the, there'll be the live video, like you see us live now, and there'll be the, the comment thread there. So you have two places to post your questions, and we hope that we get some of you um, joining us live tomorrow for that. And it is our 
honestly, like our, our passion, our pleasure, our desire to really be your guides to love and to be of service to you. So signing off for the day. Yeah. And, um, Have a great evening. Yeah, take care.